America has former First Lady Michelle Obama and now Vice President Kamala Harris breaking the mould for black women and doing amazing things. In the UK, we also have amazing influential black women, but it's not talked about. In this video, I speak to just one of them, Dawn Butler MP, who was the first black woman to not only be an MP, but to hold a government minister position. British Vogue has highlighted her good work and put her in their power list for 2020. And this is where the interview starts from. I mean, I don't do this obviously for the recognition. You know, I do things that I'm passionate about. And that's that to me is like the most joy. The fact is, is that I don't look at a list and think, right, I'm going to promote this cause because it's going to get me publicity or I'm going to appeal to this group of people. I do things that I'm completely passionate about. And that's why, and that's why I can do, that's why I can speak about, you know, deaf people. That's why I can speak about black women. That's why I can speak about women. That's why I can speak about disabled people because actually it's stuff that I feel passionate about. And it's, it's great when people kind of just recognize that and appreciate that. I mean, in the beginning, a few years ago, I was, you know, I used to feel very, if you like, shy about um, accepting praise or anything like that. I used to feel uncomfortable with that. Um, and now I feel, well, that's great. And just accept it as a blessing. You know, and so that's and that's what I'm getting used to myself, just accepting things as a blessing and saying, well, thank you. Thank you for appreciating that. So, yeah, I, it was great. No, that's and a complete surprise. Complete yeah, surprise. Yeah, that's, that's absolutely amazing. I, I, you know, there's so many things that we could talk about today. Just the fact that you're the third black woman MP outside of Diane and Una. I mean, you've got a lot of, we talk, sometimes refer back to America and all the stuff that's going on there, but you've got some serious weight on your shoulders, girl. You're, you're um, representing us Brits. I know, I know. And when you think about it, because you think, I mean, it, is, it was quite interesting as well. Some people, you know, saying, oh, you know, it's great. Kamala Harris, it was like amazing. And I can't wait until she takes office and I can't wait for, you know, um, the Biden-Harris kind of ticket and what it's going to do for America and, and what it will feed into us from the UK. I can't wait for that. And then again, it made me think, and I went to my bio and I sort of changed my bio to make sure I put in there that I was the first, you know, black woman to ever be a minister in this country as an MP. So I was the only one, you know, the, the first black female MP ever to be a minister and I'm like that's a that's a big deal the, the fact that it doesn't get talked about you know kind of annoys my mum <laughs> uh you know but um but I think yeah I should I should be really proud of that because that's history making for our country so yeah yeah absolutely and I think you were right in the sense that we do tend to shy away from praise you know if, it wouldn't, if someone says oh your hair looks nice oh I just watched it yesterday mm -hmm. So mm. what? Just take it. Yeah, as, say as thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So no, I, I think you're doing fantastic. And I'm sure people who are watching me will feel the same. So. You were on the dispatch box, okay? Mm. So that's in the House of Commons where you're able to speak. Mm. Now, was that experience what you thought it was going to be? And in hindsight, would you have changed anything that you had said? Um, so the build up to uh, being at the dispatch box, so, so in that moment, I was going to be the, the first black woman to ever stand at that dispatch box and address parliament. And, um, and I was quite frankly, I was shitting myself because it was such a huge uh, responsibility, you know, and but, but on the other hand, I was very much on top of my brief, you know, like I, you know, I, I, I do a job well, I pride myself in doing a job well. Some people say sometimes too, well, like sometimes I'm 
you know, I'm, I'm overly prepared. But Sadiq always used to say, make sure you're over prepared, never be under prepared. But um, so I'm about to go on and I'm really focused. And I, and I mentioned Sadiq because Sadiq called me and he said, are you just about to be at the dispatch box? And I said, yeah. He said, are you just about to make history? And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, why didn't you tell me? So he ran like the length of parliament to come and make sure he's sitting next to me. Like, if you see the picture, he's like slapped back on it. That's because he's knackered, because he literally just belted it over, right? So that he can sit next to me. It's like, you're making history, you're not making a fuss about it. And I'm, and I'm just like, you know, because you're just focused on making sure you do a good job. And then Sadiq turned around to, I can't remember who the MP was, who had the first question. And he's like, this is, this is history making what's happening. Make sure you mention it. So, you know, the first person that answered the question mentioned it. And so it was all going along nicely. It was ticking along. I'm getting into my groove. You know, I'm doing what I do. And then a Tory MP turned around. I used the word upskilling. And a Tory MP turned around and said, you know, that I'm using a word that's not in the Oxford Dictionary. So he's just trying to belittle me and put me down uh, in that moment. They all knew. That's the thing. Like the Tories who knew. And they probably said, make sure you put her off her game right because if they put me off my game you know that they would have they would have had a trophy they would have said look you know we 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 got her to make a fool of herself at the dispatch box you know and that's what they do so they try and put women off they try and put black women off so that you don't do it again or the next time you go you're nervous yeah. so i was already nervous. so there's nothing they can do to make me more nervous than i already was but i was prepared so there's comfort in that and um so when he said that, I was like, excuse me, you know, it's a well-known, well-used phrase. And if you don't understand what it means, I will absolutely be able to speak to the member after this session kind of thing. And I just thought, you know, sod you. <laughs> but so, but, but that's, that's, that's what comes, I suppose, with being prepared, not being confident, but being prepared. Yeah. But it didn't change how you felt obviously you would have wanted it to be perfect right and no one has said anything and you, your hands would be clapping but it showed your teeth because you weren't prepared to put up with any nonsense right so oh yeah. absolutely and and it's cool because what it did is it, it exposed them it exposed them and what they tried to do and so you know they wouldn't I mean, if it was the Tories and, and the Tories had the first black woman at dispatch box, they would talk about it every single time. For Labour, we don't, right? But it exposed them and what their uh, view of life is and progress is. And I just think, yeah, it was me saying, you know, sod you, you're not going to rain on my parade. Wow. Even the most influential of women get nervous and question their ability to own their own stage even if it's for just a little bit. If that resonates with you, why don't you put a comment and let me know your experience down below, but like and subscribe and stick around to the end because I've got a way that you might be able to work with me. Is it harder, would you say, being a woman and being black in this political climate right now to try and make things happen? 100% it's harder. It's always harder for a black woman. You know, no matter what you're doing, it's always harder mm. because you are you are judged. Um, and uh, some people say, oh, why do you always bring race into it? So then sometimes I take it back and say, you're judged if you're a woman. And people go, yeah, 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 that's true. I say, yeah, so on top of that, you've got to add uh, that you're black. If you're disabled, you add that on top of that. Uh, you know, if you're a Cockney speaking, do you know I mean? But you add that on top of that. Because there's certain connotations that comes with being a little bit Cockney. And I'm from East London, so I know all about that. So, you know, you add on top of everything. And then slowly people begin to understand. And it's not something that you want. You don't want people to feel sorry for you. What you want is just change. Let's just change it. Let's just make sure that you're cognizant of what is happening and you build that into any decisions that you're making or anything that you're saying. It, it takes practice, it takes time, but you know, eventually um, it happens naturally where you just consider what you're saying. And do you think now, would you have gone into this now knowing what you know, would you, or would you have done something else? 
there's certain things that I would have there's certain things that I think I would have changed I would have considered a bit more I think and but a lot of it is also to do I think with my personality like I am a very driven for perfection person in a way you know and so um and you kind of got to realize that not everybody thinks like you think and you you know it takes a while to kind of understand that you give people a certain amount of credit if you like because you just automatically think I'm in a political arena and everybody's going to be like you know thinking the same along the same lines as I do and then you think oh not everybody thinks that way so there's a certain naivety um that I would have maybe flagged to myself so it didn't hurt so much in a way wow i just love these interviews i just love finding out about the person behind the name and how they think and feel how about you now as promised if you are a person who is unsure about their image at the moment and it's affecting your confidence to rock your stage i would love to have a free consultation with you to see how i can help gain your confidence back and rock it like a rock star all the details are in the links below but if you like this video why not watch another one and subscribe to know when the next one's up take care